It is a beautiful summer Saturday here in Phoenix, Arizona. Ryan planned a few surprises for me to enjoy this gorgeous day. A trip to the farmer's market and a bike ride around our favorite waterfront. All this activity is sure to make us hungry. That's why I'll be creating gratifying meals to enjoy between all the excitement. These traditional dishes will be highlighting my favorite ingredient to work with, Ezekiel bread. We will start the morning off right with Ezekiel French toast. Slices of our rich bread soak in the sweetness of vanilla and agave. True to form, we will be using cinnamon to add warm floral notes and a hint of heat. Topped with an exciting compote of fresh blueberries, an inviting bite oozing the sweetness of the season. Next, it's time for lunch and a Roman panini. Meaty portobello mushroom, mild heirloom tomatoes, milky mozzarella, and arugula pesto melt together into a perfect summer panini, a bright veggie bite. And let's finish our day with Ezekiel pasta and gorgonzola sauce. Healthy and full-bodied twist we can't resist. The gorgonzola is the real star of this show. This creamy cheese adds a strong flavor and nutty aroma to the ripe tomatoes and vibrant garlic in our sauce. Cradled by a sprouted grain pasta, it's a hearty bite for any appetite. Join me as we prepare these beautiful bites. I'm Vanessa Rose. I am the daughter of an Italian-American mother and Chilean immigrant father. My style of food is simple and fresh. Life has taken me on many food ventures. Tuna fishing in Cabo San Lucas, taking in the sight and taste of Europe, or preparing meals in our family kitchen. The best of life centered around food, laughter, and love. Phoenix is now my home, where there's always a reason to gather around a table. My kitchen is full of cooking ideas that will make meals fun. God invites us into the greatest hide-and-seek adventure by exploring the flavors He put in this earth. Let's discover fresh flavors and taste new foods. Join me and my friends as we celebrate all of life's finest occasions by indulging in vibrant eats. Together we'll enjoy this beautiful life as we create each beautiful bite. Breakfast is one of my favorite meals of the day, regardless of what time it is. But right now I'm gonna make one of my favorite indulgences, which is French toast. However, this is a more healthy alternative to that. And we are going to be using Ezekiel bread. If you're not familiar with this wonderful product, it is made after the scripture. Take also unto thee wheat and barley and beans and lentils and millet and spelt and put them in one vessel and make bread of it. Ezekiel 4.9. It's so much better for you. It's better for your digestive system. It has a very low glycemic index, a lot of protein inside of it. And unlike refined flour, it doesn't turn to sugar in your body the way that that does. So it's so much healthier for you. And it makes one of my favorite indulgences so much better. First, we're gonna go ahead and take some eggs. We are going to use six eggs. One third a cup of milk. Three tablespoons and a teaspoon of agave, just a little bit of extra sweetness in there. Half a teaspoon of nutmeg. A tablespoon of cinnamon, but it gives a really nice warmth to the French toast. And two teaspoons of vanilla. And then I'm going to do a half of an orange juice. This just gives it a nice, acidic, bright pop. Orange juice makes everything delicious, and it's such a natural pairing for anything that's a breakfast food. If you happen to have a few extra oranges, I have a wonderful orange tree, actually. Go ahead and squeeze some fresh orange juice. It's so good whenever it's freshly squeezed. We're just going to give this a nice 
little whisk here, get everything blended together and make the eggs kind of fluffy. Perfect, get that all mixed together nicely. And then you actually want to take something that is shallow, you can use a dish or a baking pan. That way you can go ahead and make sure that all the bread is submerged in there and has enough time to soak evenly. And you're going to take six slices of Ezekiel bread and just put them in here. And you're gonna to wanna to put these in here and then let them soak, flip them halfway through for about 10 minutes up to 20 minutes so that they absorb all the flavor. And because this isn't refined flour, you wanna let it soak a little bit longer because it's not as absorbent as a regular, like a brioche or something you would typically use for a French toast. We let our French toast soak for about half an hour to absorb all those yummy flavors and the cinnamon and the agave and everything that's gonna make it taste so scrumptious. Preheat your oven to 400 and get your griddle or your pan nice and hot. Go ahead and use some cooking spray. And if you'd like, you can actually use a little bit of butter, which makes it a little more of an indulgence. You wanna cook these about two to three minutes on each side so they get nice and brown and delicious. And then we're gonna put them on a clean pan and finish them off in our preheated oven for about five to 10 minutes. Let's check this. Mm -mm -mm. Look at that yummy brown and that sizzle in the morning. Doesn't that just smell so good or maybe smell the cinnamon and it just fills the house with this wonderful aroma. It's gonna be so delicious. These are perfect, nice and brown and delicious. We're just gonna stick them in the oven for a few minutes to finish them off. And then it's time for breakfast. Mm -mm -mm. That smells like yummy French toast. You smell the cinnamon and the nutmeg. I think Ryan's really gonna enjoy this breakfast. So let's just go ahead and take them and make it look pretty on our plate here. The French toast isn't going to be as sweet because we are going to get all of the sweetness and flavor from the blueberry compote that was made like this. And now, this yummy blueberry compote, we are going to just pour over it. And of course, you could just do this on individual plates, but plating is half the fun. And we didn't use a immersion blender in this because we still have a lot of the fresh blueberries that didn't fully pop. So whenever we eat it, they're gonna burst in your mouth with delicious flavor. They're gonna be so good. And we don't have to do this. I know that we're avoiding as much refined sugar as possible, but this makes it look prettier. A little something sweet. Oh, how pretty. Now, I think Ryan is sure to enjoy this and it will give us lots of energy for our fun day that he has planned. I can't wait to see what we're gonna do. Before we serve breakfast, I might sneak myself just a little bite just to make sure it tastes good. Mmm, mmm. Mm -mm. The orange, the blueberry, the nutmeg, it is so, so, so good. All right, let's go ahead and set the table so we can start our fun, adventurous day together. Bless, Bless us, O Lord, and these thy gifts which you are about to receive from thy bounty through Christ our Lord. Lord. Amen. 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 Oh Yummy. So, what did you make? Some Ezekiel French toast with a blueberry compote. Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. Doesn't it smell good? The cinnamon and the nutmeg and oh my.
So I've planned a surprise. You mentioned that. What are we doing? We're going to go to the farmer's market. Yay, I love it. That'll be fun. Oh my goodness. love Saturday mornings when I have the opportunity to go to the farmers market with my husband and talk to the local farmers and see what is growing fresh and beautiful here in our desert in Arizona and what God is creating and this truly is all his natural ingredients put together to make something delicious we got some fresh basil fresh arugula we got fresh yellow heirloom tomatoes that are going to be delicious oh my goodness so sweet and bright and with that we're going to be making a delicious Roman panini and for that panini, we're gonna be making a fresh arugula, basil, walnut pesto, which is going to be so scrumptious. We are going to use about half a cup of walnuts and just give them a rough chop, so that way they get nice and broken up in our food processor. We're gonna use between six to 10 cloves of garlic, and this really depends on your personal preference. I don't think you can ever use enough garlic, but some people are a little more sensitive to that, so if you'd like, you can use a little less, and also judge based on the size of the clove. Just give those, again, a rough chop. And then we're going to use about three cups of fairly well-packed basil. You just wanna take them off the stem. Just give this, again, a rough chop. Mm, I don't know about you, but I love the smell of basil. It truly is my favorite herb. Then we have some fresh baby arugula. It's delicious. It was from our local farmers here. Also give this a nice rough chop. And we're giving everything a rough chop just so that it all processes evenly inside of the food processor because some things are bigger than others. I actually love the smell of arugula. Arugula is actually very peppery, which is why I like it in this, because it adds a nice bite to the uh, pesto, where if it's just basil, it's a little sweeter. And then I have a cup of freshly shredded pecorino romano that I did myself in my food processor, but you can also use grated. And also an alternative, you can use Parmesan if you'd like. I just like pecorino romano. It's a little nuttier and not as, not as salty. We're gonna do a teaspoon of salt, a teaspoon of pepper, and now we're going to turn on the food processor and then begin to add our olive oil. Just watch the consistency and make sure that it is nice and smooth. That looks just about right. It's about a cup and a half of olive oil, but you can do it to your taste preference. Let's taste it and make sure we don't need any more salt. <laughs> It's so good. Oh my goodness. I love it. It's so peppery because of the arugula. It gives it this nice spice index that typically you wouldn't get out of a regular basil pesto. Mm, so many wonderful aromas. It's amazing whenever you use the ingredients that God gave us in this earth, how fragrant and delicious without a lot of salt and without a lot of additives, it is so bright and delicious. Now I'm gonna clean up this mess from our pesto, get our panini press out here and get ready to make our delicious Roman panini. We cleaned everything up, we got our panini press out. So go ahead and turn your panini press on high. If you don't have a panini press, you can actually just use your stove and then use some sort of heavy blunt object to make sure to press it down because that's what makes the panini so good because you get heat from both sides so it makes that cheese all ooey gooey and melty. Mm -mm -mm. We are going to use these delicious, beautiful yellow heirloom tomatoes that we got at the farmer's market this morning. And I love heirloom tomatoes because they are so sweet. 
They are just truly delicious and you don't need to do much with them. I love to just eat them on their own, just a nice tomato salad as well. Now we're going to take the bread, our yummy Ezekiel bread. Just spread a little on each side. Okay. And now we are going to do our yummy portobello mushrooms that I cooked down in balsamic vinegar. And this is how I did that. And now we are just going to place these here. These are a great alternative. This is a vegetarian panini, so if you are vegetarian, a lot of times mushrooms are used as an alternative for vegetarian recipes, especially portobellos, because they're so rich and meaty and delicious. And whenever you cook them down that way, they get this sweetness to them with the balsamic vinegar, and it's a nice meaty bite, so you feel like you had some good substance without maybe having meat in your day that day. Now we have fresh sliced mozzarella. You can put as little or as much as you like. I love cheese. I have never met a cheese I didn't like, I can tell you that much. Let's go ahead and put our tomato here. Mmm, look at those yummy colors, all this flavor. Tomatoes are delicious. They always need just a little bit of salt though. Let's go ahead and close this up. Ooh, this is gonna be so good. We are, so go ahead and open up your panini press. You get all the nice heat coming off of there. And put, this is a non-stick, so we don't need anything on it. Do you hear that? Mmm, you hear some of the juices coming out and sizzling. Make sure to get a nice heaviness on there. The reason that I'm making this is Ryan and I went to Italy for my birthday last year and one of my favorite meals was whenever we were sitting in a park looking out over the Roman Colosseum, which is one of the seven wonders of the world. And we stopped at a little sandwich shop and got some paninis and went and sat in a bench next to a local man eating out of his little bowl. It was so simple, nothing fancy, nothing overdone. It was one of my favorite meals that I had because of the food, because of the experience. And that is what was the inspiration for this meal. And even something as beautiful as these beautiful heirloom tomatoes. You know, sometimes we look so much for the perfection in life and we look for the little things that are always perfect so we can make everything perfect. But sometimes it's the imperfections and it's those little moments that just happen. Those things in nature, the things, the gifts that God gives us, the truly miraculous little moments moments in life that are truly so special and make the absolute best memories. So never make, make sure to never raise your expectations so high that you forget to miss out on the little beauties that God gives us, our little God winks that we have every single day. So let's go ahead and check these and flip them. Ooh, look at how crunchy and crispy that bread is. Yummy. And now we'll go ahead and repress it and let it finish because you can see that cheese is starting to get nice. Mmm, the sound of sizzle. Oh, it sounds so good. I can almost taste it. Mmm, see the cheese melting over the side. Oh, those are beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Oh my. Let's go ahead and take this off of here. Yummy. I love whenever it gets that little crustiness of the cheese around the side because it fell onto the surface that's cooking it. Oh, yes. Mm -mm -mm. I'm gonna go ahead and cut these up, put a little bit of dipping pesto on the side, and then I think it's time for our delicious lunch. Mmm, I think it's time for lunch. That is so good. Do you taste the pepperiness? Oh, that's so good and all the garlic. So what are we doing next? Well, I talked to my friends at Pedigo mm -hmm. and 
I'm gonna take you on a bike ride. Yay, where at? The waterfront. Oh my goodness, that'll be so much fun. I love bike rides, I really do. Join the conversation and follow us on all social media platforms. Making one of my recipes at home? Snap a photo and post it with hashtag it's a beautiful bite. Going on your own food venture? Take photos and post them with hashtag food ventures. Have your own Jesus moment to share? Share it with hashtag Jesus moment. Visit us at itsabeautifulbite.com for recipes from this episode and so much more. One of the most popular stories of the prophet Ezekiel is the encounter with God in the Valley of Dry Bones. Ezekiel is in a desert wasteland surrounded by ashes, dust, and death. Can these bones live? God asks Ezekiel. O oh Lord, only you know, the prophet responds. Then, before the prophet's eyes, God reassembles the bones. Joints, ligaments, and muscles align. With his breath, hope is restored. This story shows me that even in the most impossible situations, Jesus brings new life. When we allow him to speak his words of healing into the problem, circumstances will change. Death turns to life, hopelessness to hope, and despair to destiny. With one word, Jesus takes your bareness and makes it beautiful. What a fun day. Oh my goodness, the farmer's market this morning and just going on a bike ride. Ryan is so thoughtful to think to put all those things together that I love and sitting at the herb box and having some delicious tea. Now I'm gonna make one of my absolute favorite pasta sauces. It's true, true Italian. My dear friend Nantes taught me how to make this actually, who's from Italy. And it's extremely simple and rich and scrumptious. You're gonna take about two tablespoons of olive oil and put it in a pan. You are going to take about three whole garlic cloves. You just want to let these cook down and infuse the oil. That's the reason you're using these. You're going to let those sit in the oil for about five to ten minutes. You want to wait till they get a little bit brown because then you know that they've cooked down and that delicious flavor has infused itself into the oil. As you can see, we got that garlic nice and brown. So we're just gonna remove it out of here and you can put it to the side and save it later. You can use it for mashed potatoes later or anything that you'd like. Now you are going to add the tomatoes, four cups of tomatoes, a half a teaspoon of salt. Mm, if you could just smell the garlic and the tomatoes cooking, oh my goodness. Whenever you make this at home, this is sure to wow any dinner guest. Just coat the tomatoes in the oil and that deliciously infused oil now with garlic in it. And you're going to let this cook down for about 20 minutes. We have that beautiful bubbling now going and the tomatoes are cooked down. Some of the skin has come off, a few of them have burst, not all of them, but they're to that perfect consistency. So now we are going to add the tomato sauce. The tomato sauce, the reason that I use it is it gives it a little more of a roundness to the sauce so that it's not as much of a watery consistency. Since we use cherry tomatoes and we didn't de-seed them, it can get a little bit watery. Now that we've heated this all the way through, we want to go ahead and turn the heat off. And we are going to add the fresh chopped parsley. And now we're going to add four ounces of crumbled gorgonzola cheese. If you can't find gorgonzola, you can also use blue cheese. This just has a little milder of a flavor. And now with the heat off, you just want to stir all of this together and the gorgonzola cheese will begin to melt. Just keep stirring it a little bit and just the residual heat that's inside of the sauce will melt it. You don't want to leave the heat on because then sometimes it can scold the cream and the milk that's inside of it. Mm, 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 mm. Oh my goodness. If you could smell this, you get the bite from the gorgonzola and the fresh garlic and the fresh parsley. Mm. 
Mwah! That is truly delicious and beautiful and scrumptious. Now I'm gonna go ahead and mix all this together with the pasta and it's almost time for dinner. We have our freshly made Ezekiel pasta that I put in, of course, heavily salted water and cooked. You get a little facial every time you do that. <laughs> And now we have our delicious sauce we just made, and you're just gonna wanna pour this right. Oh, it smells so good. I wish you could taste it. Oh my goodness, and smell it. Mm. We wanna just take a little bit of fresh parsley for garnish, make it look pretty. We do eat with our eyes, as we know. Perfect. But first, let's go ahead and mix this all up. Now you wanna be nice and careful with this. Always toss your pasta with two spoons and be gentle, especially with this Ezekiel pasta because it's not processed flour. It will break up a little more easily than a regular flour-based pasta would. Mm -mm -mm. That is truly beautiful and delicious. Finish it off with our little bit of fresh garnish. Fresh herbs make everything prettier. And most importantly, we need to taste it nice and piping hot from the stove. You can see the beautiful tomatoes that are there that are slightly burst, but not entirely, so you still get that yummy, fresh burst in your mouth whenever you take a bite. Mm, 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 mm. Because we use the whole cherry tomatoes, they burst a little bit in your mouth still. You get the garlic that was cooked down perfectly. You get the fresh parsley. And I actually love Ezekiel pasta because even though it's healthier. I love the nuttiness that you get inside of it. It is so good. Before I set the table, we always have to make sure to do our social media, right? Beautiful. If you make any of these recipes at home, please make sure to post it and hashtag it's a beautiful bite. I think it's time for dinner now so Ryan and I can have a wonderful meal to end our really special day. Mmm. Thank you. Mm -mm -mm. Father God, thank you for this day. Thank you for this wonderful, beautiful, blessed day that we were able to share together. Bless us food down to our bodies. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, bon appetit. Bon appetit. Yes. Some yummy Ezekiel French bread. French bread. Sorry. What? I, I picked these blueberries yesterday. <laughs> right, you're fired. Can I get my stand in husband, please? Come on. People <laughs> laugh when I laugh, it's very awkward. That's why I'm taking you on a bicycle ride. <laughs> so you can air me out. Okay. <clears throat> Why are you Just eat, please.